Good morning, Restore Community Church. Uh, I'm so glad to be joining with you this morning. If you don't know, my name is Dustin Pruitt. I'm the location leader over at Restore Winchmore Hill. Uh, and it's my pleasure to be with you here today. Whether you're watching this Sunday, January the 28th of 2024, or this is later on down the line, uh, I, I thank you for clicking in. Uh, it, to, to give you a brief glimpse uh, into my life, I was I was diagnosed with pneumonia earlier this week. I, I was already kind of in the process of getting over it. It was a, a, a low case called walking pneumonia. Uh, so if I do cough, if I do need a drink of water here uh, to clear my throat, please have grace in your heart. Have mercy. Uh, and I'm here, regardless of all that, to speak to you today because I do feel so drawn and driven and passionate about the word that God has given us for this new year, for the year of 2024, this new season of Restore. Um, and that's in Ezekiel 37. <clears throat> now, I'm not going to read the entirety of Ezekiel 37. Uh, I encourage you to read it once again, but I want to, today we're going to focus on just two verses, just, just a little snippet of it. Um, and that's Ezekiel 37, verses 7 and 8. And it says, So I prophesied as I was commanded. And as I was prophesying, there was a noise, a rattling sound, and the bones came together bone to bone. I looked, and the tendons and flesh appeared on them, and skin covered them, but there was no breath in them. And so that's our, our snippet for today. But Ezekiel 37 overall it's kind of really been where Restore has been coming from for the past three or four years now. Um, where, where we're a number of churches that are meeting all over. We're united under the vision of Isaiah 61. And ultimately, almost, I, I mean, that's where we get our name from. In, in verse 4 of Isaiah 61, it says, They will rebuild the ancient ruins and restore the place is long devastated. That's why we are Restore Community Church with a, a little R. Our logo has a small R on it because we're in the act of restoration. We're, we're not the a name. We are all about the act of restoring the place is long devastated. That's what we feel God has called us to. And so we have all these congregations. Each congregation has somewhat their each unique vision underneath that. Um, that expresses the heart and the vision, the values of those communities of Restore at the local level. That, and the communities that they're a part of. The communities of Woodford look a little different from the communities of Albany. Albany looks different from Winchmore Hill. Winchmore Hill looks different to Loughton. And so each of our different visions look a little different. Or expressed a little different might be the best way to put that. And it's the vision of multiplication. We, we don't want one big location, one big temple to where we can all come together and we all listen to Ian. Uh, though by far he is, he's such a wonderful speaker and dynamic and wonderful and preaching the gospel. But that's not, that's not what God called Ian to lead. God called Ian to plant, to multiply, to reach that much deeper for the kingdom of heaven here on earth. And so, and with that, we, we, we have our structure, and, and so we have elders uh, that they lead the vision, and they, they, they pray to God for the seeking of the direction of that. We have staff that lead the implementation at the local level of what does that look like? What is that vision? Let's, let's make it happen here. Uh, we also have trustees that keep us in line and on track in a legal sense, because we, we, we've got to follow the law of the land. That's... That's not something we can just pass on by. Uh, so we have these things here. And it's the vision that we carry for the church. That we see ourselves as an assembly of people. An assembly, a, a grouping of people with a range of gifts, and a range of abilities, a range of experiences, a range of histories, a range of speaking patterns, etc., etc., to fulfill the vision that God has given us. Now, I, I, I think language can be very important, and I think it's very important here. When we, we say the church, we're 
Restore Community Church. A lot of us think of a building. When you hear the word church, what do you think of? Maybe you think of the Sistine Chapel. Maybe you think of uh, a great Anglican church with ancient history behind it. But that's not what the church is. That, that's a building. A, it could be a beautiful building. It could even be an ugly building. But that's just a building. That's not the church. The, uh, let's, let's go back in biblical times. In the biblical times, the church were communities driven by relationship that bound people together. I mean, even the, the word, the meaning of the word church there was a called out assembly, called out. Obviously, the called out is easy for us. We were called by God as his sons and daughters to go forth and preach the gospel. We're, we're called. The assembly part is great. Now, an Old Testament word, there's, uh, please always ask for forgiveness when I'm, I'm trying to pronounce an Old Testament name or word or a Hebrew word. Um, kahal. And has it, maybe there's not enough form in there. Kahal. Uh, and has it, it's a sense of being together. Hence the translation of assembly is a togetherness. It's not a, it's not a grouping. It's not, hey, I'm standing next to you. You're standing next to them. We're an assembly. It, it's a togetherness, something that is binding you together that is not just your geographical location. You are bound together. So that, that, that's the idea of the church. And, and to go even further, uh, Paul talks about what the church really is in 1 Corinthians uh, chapter 12, starting in verse 12. If I can read some really quickly, it says, Just as the body, though one, has many parts... But all its many parts form one body, so it is with Christ. For we are all baptized by one spirit, so as to form one body, whether Jews or Gentiles, slave or free, whether black or white, I'm not, now I'm adding that, black or white, English or Welsh, English or American, South African, or whatever it may be. To go back whether Jews or Gentiles, slave or free. And we were all given the one spirit to drink. Even so, the body is not made up of one part, but many. Now, he goes on to, to talk about a few things that we can break down a little bit. The body's a unit. It's, it, it's the assembly again. And it's made of many parts, but it's all one. I have, I have 10 fingers. Some people can be really pedantic and say you have eight fingers and two thumbs, but I, I got them. But that's not all of me, but it's a part of me. I got a nose, it may be crooked, it may be slant to one side because I broke it as a, as a seven-year-old. Um, it's a piece of me, but it's a part of me. And in no way do my fingers compete against my nose compete against my eyes, compete against my lungs, compete against my stomach, my legs. It's all working together as a unit to be the wonderful me, if I may say so. If I may not come off as prideful, the wonderful me. I love my 10 fingers. I love what I got. I love what I've been blessed with. And it all works together. And so with that, we got to work together. If we are the church, if we are the assembly of God, not to take, there, there's a denomination of Christianity, they call themselves the assembly of God uh, or the AOG. Uh, but if we are the capital A assembly of God, of the Lord, we got to work together. A body doesn't work against itself. A, a functioning, healthy body does not work against itself. So we got to work together the, to be complete, to be whole. Though they're different, my, my fingers are very different from my nose. My nose is very different from my mouth. My, my mouth is very different from my heart. My heart is very... We are all very different. And I love the differences. I rejoice in the differences. And hopefully, hopefully, you guys rejoice that I'm different too. I feel like many people tell me quite often how different I can be. Uh, maybe that is just the American or maybe... 
That's just how unique Dustin Pruitt is uh, here on this earth. I don't know. But if we can rejoice in those differences and how that they don't separate us, but they make us a whole. I think that's what God is calling us to. And Ezekiel 37, the, the parts come together to form the body. If we can come together to form the body of Christ, God can breathe in us. Paul knew the importance of this image of a body working together. He goes on in Ephesians 4 to talk about this. If I can read a, a, a little snippet, but it won't be the whole thing, but basically the beginning of Ephesians chapter 4 is where I'm drawing from. It says, make every effort, starting in verse 3, to keep the unity of the Spirit through the bond of peace. There is one body and one spirit, just as you were called uh, to one hope when you were called. Like that one body, if we come together, God can breathe in us that one spirit. One Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is all and through all and in all. I just think that's so, so wonderful that Paul, he, he fully saw it 2,000 years ago. And God knew that those words that he gave to Paul are important for us today, that that, that unity come to, together. He talks about the, the gifts that are given late, later on in the verse in, through 12 and 13 if to equip his people for works of service so that the body of Christ may be built until we all reach unity in the faith and in the knowledge of the Son of God and become mature, attaining the whole measure of the fullness of Christ. I think that's so beautiful. That's God has called us. We're, we're all different. My, my, once again, I, I don't want to seem like I'm teaching a, a, a kid's service at Sunday school here, but sometimes those principles, they translate. My fingers can do things my nose can't. My nose can do things that my heart can't. My heart can do things that my toes can't. It's that mentality. God has equipped each and every one of us to play our part that is unique to us with gifts given to us by, by the one Father, that one Spirit, the, the giver of good gifts. And if we work in harmony, it's that promise that comes the, the, of what the church reaching at full stature means. In verse 16, it says, From Him, meaning Jesus, the whole body joined and held together by every supporting ligament grows and builds itself up in love as each part does its work. I that I should have just said that sentence there and I could have this Sunday this little message could have been 15 seconds. That's what God is calling us to is to come together to be held together in a called out assembly. We the things that bind us, the ligaments that call out, we got. That's the call from God. The assembly, we're the bones, we're coming together. Each of us different, unique, twisted, and turned, angled in a different way. I, I'm stretching metaphors here, maybe a little too far. But come together to form the body, his church. It's so reminiscent. I, I've said it before, and maybe you'll forgot. Uh, I love the quote from George Lucas, the creator of Indiana Jones and Star Wars, when talking about Star Wars, um, when he was making the, the prequel series in the early 2000s, he would, people would ask him, George, why do you do that? That, what, that doesn't make sense. Like, and he's like, the thing about Star Wars is it rhymes. So this thing happened in those previous movies. They happen here. They'll happen again because it rhymes. He says Star Wars rhymes. And I love taking that quote and saying, yeah, the Bible rhymes. Where it, in Ezekiel 37, it uses imagery of the bones and the ligaments and the organs coming together to form a body here in Corinthians and here in Ephesians, we have that same imagery used again. The Bible is rhyming with itself. Showing us the importance of when things come together, God can breathe into it. His spirit can be breathed into things. And when he breathes, comes life. When, when he was making 
Adam in the garden. He formed the, the earth, the, the dust of the earth into the shape of man. Then he breathed life. In the valley of dry bones, the bones come together. They're just a body. They don't, it says in Ezekiel 37, they had no breath. They were, they were dead still until God breathed and then life came. And so with us here at Restore, if we can come together in unity and not compete and not backbite and not, now I'm not saying don't, that, I'm not saying don't argue, don't complain, don't if don't take my wrong, words the wrong way. But if we can come together in unity of the calling of the assembly that God has given us, as we feel like Restore has done the past couple of years, he's brought these bones into shape. God's breath is coming. Are we ready? That's that's my question for myself and for you. Are we ready? And if not, let's get ready. Let us get ready. God is about to breathe into us. Restore the things that were dead. Restore the wasteland. The things that were seen as worthless, without value, wasted. Cast aside. He's about to breathe in it. So let's get ready. Guys, let us get ready for what God is going to do in this new season for Restore. I, it, I firmly believe it's going to blow our minds. And so what does getting ready look like? We need to think. I, that sounds so obvious, doesn't it? I mean, maybe that's something my, my mom would always shout at me. Dustin, where are you think, what were you thinking? And I'm like, I, I wasn't. Every time I was in trouble, Dustin, what were you thinking? And most of the time, I just really wasn't. I was just acting. And so, it for me, it had to be a conscious thing to think before I acted. So we got to think. We got to take stock. Okay, God, I'm a part of this body. Where, where do I slot in? Am I the hands? Am I the feet? Am I the heart? Am I the eyes? Am I the mouth? What am I? And to stretch the metaphor too much again, am, am I meant to go out to people? Am I meant to reach out and comfort people? Am I meant to give an encouraging word? Am I meant to see a vision, to dream a dream that you're giving us so that somebody may know that you are with them and are watching and are present? These are, you know, the apostles, the prophets, the evangelists, the shepherds, the teachers. We got to find it. What are you gifted in? I want you to think on it. Take stock. What do I bring to the kingdom? What do I bring to the body? And then look around. What's going on? What's Where at? In restore, in, in our assembly, do I see a gap that, man, I really wish somebody was doing this thing. Man, I really wish we our youth ministry was slamming. Maybe God's calling your eye, calling your heart to youth ministry. Man, I really wish we were reaching out to the widows of restore. Well, what are the gaps? What are the gaps that you see that the body needs filled. That how can we develop the model of church? Now remember, I'm not talking about a building. Model of the assembly to truly share life, to share who you are, your relationship, your hurts, your successes, your joys, your pains. Because that's, that's the assembly. That's what binds us. It's, it's the assembly of relationship. It's not just the person you're sitting next to. You could sit next to them for years and not know them. And then let's think outside. Who could you be calling into this? You see a gap? You can't fill it? Who can? 
Who can? Oh, I know the, I know the perfect person. I always think back. Uh, I wasn't always a, a minister. Uh, I was always. I've been a part of church since I was sixteen. But I was, I wasn't always working at a church for four years. I worked at a, a video arcade and go kart track. Uh, and I was a manager for like three of those years. But my boss, my manager, uh, his name was Mike Bolda. Uh, Love the guy. He was so great. Such a charismatic person. I had no idea why he was working at a go-kart track. He was so, so intelligent and so kind. And I always thought, God, if he came to know you and know your love, I mean, my city would be changed. There's no way that guy wouldn't radicalize the nation. If he just if if he just grabbed a hold of who you are and your love for him. And so I would pray, God, please bring him in. And I'm not saying, oh, everyone else can do the job I'm supposed to do. I'm just saying, look around you, that God has placed people around you that are waiting for that call, that called out assembly, they're waiting for the call. And it's our job to bring that call. It's our joy to bring that call. So let's do it. Let's, let's, let's be unified together as the assembly of the Lord. And then let us get ready for his breath is coming to breathe in us and to restore the things that were dead, to restore the things that were lost, to restore the things that were seen as worthless. And by getting ready, let's think and take stock of who we are, what we bring. Let's turn those eyes outwards. Let's see the gaps. What are the gaps I can fill? Got to draw my heart there. What are the gaps I can't fill? God, draw my heart to call out to those who can. That's where God's taking us. That's, that's the excitement. I feel so energized by this. This is why I wanted to share this message. My heart just just inflamed right now. And I hope that this spark, this flame can just reach through your screen so that you may feel it too and see where God is taking us here in this new season. Let's pray right now. God, we thank you so much for who you are. God, we thank you so much that we get to be a part of the body that I get to be with this motley crew, this motley family, this assembly, where I'm different and they're different, but we're all one, united in you. So God, I ask you to open our eyes. God, to show us who you made us to be. We are your beloved children, yes, but what part do I have to play in all this? Where can I fit in? God, in the people that you've put around me, God, embolden me to call out. Embolden me to share. Embolden us. Oh God, because those people, if they come to know you, London's changed. The UK, the world will be changed. And how amazing is that? God, we thank you. We thank you. We thank you. And all God's people said, amen and amen. Thank you for stopping by, guys. Please tune in with us next week as we're going to continue on in this series of Ezekiel of 
really cementing this vision in our heart for the season going forward. Uh, until then, guys, thank you for stopping by. Cheers.